Hi, I'm Tiffany. And I'm Rihanna, and welcome or welcome back to Fresh Off the Broke. Fresh Off the Broke is about personal experiences growing up Asian American in a predominantly white community, Asian media, and Asian pop culture in general. Race is always been a sensitive topic. Every day, there are debates over race. With our podcast, we intend to shed light on the experiences of first generation Asian immigrants, not put them on a pedestal. We understand that race isn't everything, but there should be an acknowledgement of people of color, the knowledge gap, and the racial divide that will ideally be broken. But that's out of the way, let's get into the episode. Today we'll be discussing the white man sidekick. <laughs> Before we get into this episode, we do have some important disclaimers to make. So one, white does not automatically equal bad or racist and so on. And this episode and this main topic in general is not meant to be white bashing because that does not contribute to positive change if we keep saying oh we we hate white people we don't like white people it's always you know us versus them rather than us versus the system and we are specifically talking about a a group of people not a a group but a type of person that we see on social media because social media obviously um, it's not so much as prominent in real life as it is on social media because of all the attention that people want to get. Mm-hmm. And it's a very specific niche of people which we will be talking about and we will get into that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Let's get into that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I guess my definition would be Someone who does anything for the sake of getting white man approval. And the reason why we bring white into the definition is because the things that they do sacrifice their own background or would Mm -hmm. be at the cost of their own uh, identity. But then again, I would say that most of the quote unquote white men sidekicks that we are talking about don't really care about their own background in the first place yes that's that's very true also for anyone that in general isn't familiar with this term and this topic that we're talking about white man is like a character or a general term that we call the white people (laughs) no (laughs) well because the thing is when people think of who has the quote unquote utmost privilege it's like cis het white men. Yeah. We're which just is why talking about say like, white man sidekick. Yeah. It's yeah. not uh, it does, like it could it could be a white other gender identifying person. Yeah. It's just for the the general whoever holds the most power in this hierarchy, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> Maybe this should just be a thing that we say in our episodes now. Yeah. We live in society. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think um, just from, like, just for people who are listening, if you are familiar with rice gum... Oh, no. He would be a good example, I would say, because I, I don't want to regurgitate stuff because this was, like, talked about very heavily when it happened. But Rice Gum, um, he is Asian. And, in case you didn't know. Yeah, in case you didn't know, Rice Gum is Asian. And everything was perfectly fine at first. Like, he was just making regular YouTube videos. And then he went, he started doing, like, weird, he started saying, like, a couple weird things. And then he went to China and then mm-hmm. posted pictures and made videos that were basically him making fun of the locals. Mm-hmm. First off, people that genuinely don't know who Rice Gum is, he, you know, as Rihanna said, was a YouTuber. He started off making, I don't know if I want to call them cringe compilations, but he rose the fame with his These Kids Must Be Stopped videos. Yeah. Where he basically commentated slash made fun of, uh, you know, like musically stars, people like that. And people that don't know what musically is, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. It's like TikTok, but back in the day. Yeah. Okay. And 
So what Reichgum did was he, there was a lot. He tried to give some guy on the, sh on the street some like leftover food. Like he took a bite, he took a bite out of something. And then later he, he like gave this guy, he's like, you want like yummy? Well, I mean, this is ver 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 verbatim. This isn't actually what he said, but it was a, in a very much a mocking way. And that was like the, the least of the things he did. Yeah. And he made a, I don't want to say a reaction video, but he made almost like a response video to the criticism that he was getting because someone in China also translated that video and then posted it on a Chinese social media. And a lot of people, a lot of Chinese people were very much angry at the fact that, you know, someone of Ch Chinese descent was insulting his, his own people. And in that video, he was saying like, oh, I wasn't, I don't know what you guys are talking about. I was trying to give him food, you know, like say, like you could tell that he was, he was, I don't want to say being satirical, but he would, he was being like, hey guys, I'm not being offensive. I was just trying to give him, like it was, it was just a really weird way of addressing the situation. And if you look at the comments of that video as well, there are there aren't very many words of support for him. It was genuinely just, for lack of better words, a bad move. I mean, definitely there are people that thought it was hilarious, but a lot of people so, were mad at the time and still do think of that moment. And I would like to point out that Rice Gum heavily associates himself. Well, not heavily, but he he's in the same. I guess circle in a way as people like Logan Paul who we all know and love so much the Paul brothers and if you know anything about Logan Paul and Jake Paul you know that they pretty much are the white men of YouTube so yeah their audiences are very similar to Rice Gums and I think that's why Rice Gum ended up making that video in the first place when you know with, with the definition you gave as well as the, the right gum tangent i'll just say anecdote but an anecdote is like a personal experience <laughs> you don't know I have a personal experience with rice gum <laughs> <laughs> that's what this podcast episode is about yeah <laughs> anyways you saying that reminds me of certain experiences or just in general a school environment because you know when people are in middle school or in high school, they are in vulnerable, I would say, mindset, and they're seeking a lot of validation, you know, in, in, more, in more ways than just uh, making fun of people. But, you know, it's, a lot of people do things to seem cool, and your tangent kind of reminded me of that. Yeah, Ricegum, he gives me middle school vibes, and I guess if you were in middle school watching that, you would be and you you probably like wouldn't really have a problem with it because oh look an asian guy he looks like me and he's making these videos and he's popular and people are laughing with him i so, actually knew people like that yeah <laughs> i knew so did i <laughs> i knew asian guy that very much like right um quoted him and I'm just going to leave it a large sigh. Insert yeah. large sigh, you know. It's... And the thing is, these were the same people that when our classmates would make a racist comment, whether or not it was towards Asians, it could have been towards another student, because, you know, not Asians aren't the only people that get racist comments. They would not say anything or laugh along. Or sometimes they would make it so that they would make the joke first, which I know is in a in a way a coping mechanism, and there's and there's reason why people do that. But it it also is important that we acknowledge the reason why, and also like why that's a problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it reminded me. Um, there was a video on TikTok that went viral recently. Oh. Um, it was some guy, an Asian guy. And he was, mm -hmm. like, just scrolling on Omegle, or scrolling, passing through people on Omegle, I guess. And um, 
he was screen recording it and he okay. posted one of his conversations with an Asian guy, right? Mm-hmm. And so he joins the call and the Asian guy goes, oh my God, look, you're Asian like me. And then he pulls his eye back, both of his eyes back and he goes, ching chong, ching chong. And he, he's Asian. Oh. The guy recording is Asian and he goes, dude, what is wrong with you? And he's like, oh, I'm just trying to speak in our native language, right? And he goes, okay, white man sidekick, and then just leaves. And he posted that oh, on his TikTok. And it's it's sad to me seeing stuff like that, because clearly th- that guy is in an environment where people make fun of him for that. Mm-hmm. Clearly. And- Judging by what you're saying, they were both East Asian, right? Yes, they were. Mm-hmm. Gosh, yeah. Uh, I've seen so much of that. Not uh, the videos, but, you know, in real life mm-hmm. experiences. Because growing, growing up, there were a lot of people I knew, you know, Asian, not Asian, that would purposely, like, people wouldn't even, I mean, I did go to a school where people would casually make racist comments all the time. But also, when people weren't making racist comments, sometimes those people, well, not the people that were making them, the people that were getting them made, would randomly bring up a racist joke about themselves. Kind of kind of similar to the guy you were talking about that was going, oh, ching chong, ching chong, I'm speaking our native language. Yeah. Like, I, I, I knew there was this one Chinese guy I went to school with that would always make jokes about himself eating dog. Mm. And I don't know, it's kind of devastating to think about. Yeah. And even like me as a kid, I would also get made fun of stuff like that. But then I think as a coping mechanism, I would just be like, yeah, what if I do? But then again, like I wasn't really in the same environment as you because I was surrounded by a bunch of other POC and it was just everyone making jokes about everybody mm-hmm. which is still a problem mm-hmm. you mentioned in a different episode that growing up eight different types of asians would go against each other right yes for example you know like one region versus another region yeah that's that's also another thing because then I mean, it goes it goes back to the definition you were saying before, where it's like you're competing for the attention of the white man, which you know is also at the hand of white man and white supremacy. Yeah. Now, now that I think about it, I just realized. So, in my class, oh? the one the minority in that class were the white kids, and the white kids didn't really get made fun of. <laughs> <laughs> that. It, it, yeah. <laughs> that interesting it very much just ties into the white man's approval (laughs) that's interesting because you said they were the minority of the class and that does bring up a topic that i've seen people talk about for example though (laughs) it's an interesting example so jubilee the youtube channel you know the one that's known for middle ground spectrum Mm. videos like that there was one called do all white people think alike and there was a question about how well well, if you thought that white people no i think it was something like does racism towards white people like this or something like that and there was this one person that argued yes because growing up they were the minority of their class even though they were white, and they said that people made fun of them. And most of the other people in that video disagreed with that because they said it's not the same thing. Yeah. And I, I do have to say, it, it is not quite the same thing. Yeah. Because, for, forgive, <laughs> forgive us <laughs> for another disclaimer, <laughs> but <laughs> discrimination and exclusion can happen to anyone. Yes. <laughs> yes. We're going to ch- let's just make sure we're all on yes. the same page here. But it's important to acknowledge what type 
the duration and like the severity of that exclusion. Because for some people, it's more, hey, you can't talk to us or you can't, <laughs> you can't sit with us. Yeah. <laughs> and then for some people, it's on the lines of, hey, you don't deserve to be alive. Yeah. Or you don't deserve to get this job just because your name sounds different. Mm-hmm. And, th- and this isn't meant to be like, oh, other people have it worse. This is more, this, this is literally <laughs> how yeah. it is. You know, yeah. it's not. Yeah, and, oh, I guess another thing we haven't m- touched on yet when we were talking about uh, people of color making jokes about themselves for validation, they would also befriend those uh, like racist classmates and then kind of just let them p- pummel them with all these jokes. It's it's kind of like the whole um, stereotype of, oh, the class clown is probably the one who's, like, the most depressed. Mm-hmm. Because, obviously, if you're getting made fun of that much, it's going to get to you at some point or another. Yeah, and if, um, it's not an uncommon coping mechanism for people in general to make jokes. I mean, we do, we do it a lot here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we have this podcast. Yes. And I felt the need to acknowledge that because I know someone out there, you know who you are, is probably shaking their head right now at us. <laughs> so I got, I got you. <laughs> Please stop shaking your head. It hurts my feelings. <laughs> but yes, back, back to what I was saying. It, ends up turning into this whole I don't even know if I can call it giving a pass it's more just taking it because you want to be popular or you want to be friends with the people that are quote unquote more likable or just uh, I don't know I don't know if I want to call it like climbing the social ladder but it's definitely hey these kids are popular these kids are like I want to be liked too so I'm going to let them be mean to me or laugh at me yeah, because I'm, gonna be cool I'm with friends them. with them. I'm friends with them. So I'm cool, right? Yeah. But you're not. And, I'm, and I don't mean you're not cool. I mean, they don't think you're cool. Yeah. They just think you're fun to have around because they can make fun of you. Yeah. You know, actually, I, <laughs> a friend of mine, her brother, is her little brother is kind of like that right now. Oh no. I know. It's and she and she calls him out on it, but he doesn't and you know, it's like what we've been saying this whole time. I think deep down he knows. Yeah. But he doesn't he doesn't really want to like it. And yeah. I don't know. Sometimes you do have to figure that find out yourself. Because, mm-hmm. you know, people people could keep telling you. But if you don't want to believe it, then you'll never believe it, you know? Yeah, it's it's also, like, really, for me, I can really sympathize with these people. Because if you're in an environment where you literally can't make friends unless you're like that, mm-hmm. would you rather be alone or would you rather, like, choose the lesser of the two evils, pretty much? Like, be made mm-hmm. fun of, but have people with you, even if they're surface-level friends, quote-unquote. Or mm-hmm. would you rather just be alone the whole time? Mm-hmm. Because it's really easy to be on the outside. It's kind of like sometimes when people watch movies and they say, oh, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. It's really easy to say, oh, I wouldn't let myself do this or I wouldn't be that. But you also weren't in that situation. Mm-hmm. And you can't, you know, you can, it's, so, it's so easy to say, oh, I, I wouldn't, but we're, you weren't there, you know? And mm. because you weren't there, you wouldn't even know if you would or not, would not do that. Yeah. And, you know, it sounds like a teacher-y thing to say, <laughs> but, <laughs> and I haven't even said it yet. 
<laughs> when you meet people, they're all at various stages of their life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you could be the same age as someone, but someone might be at a different point in, you know, their relationship with themselves or their race. So I, it's not ne- it's not fair to necessarily shame these people because they're, they are being played by a system, mm-hmm. you know? And <laughs> not the, hey, don't hate the play, hate the game, but you know, yeah. they, don't, it's the game. This is, we're all, we're all part of this game. It's, yeah. I, like, even in Rice Gum's case, like, at first, even though his videos were questionable because he pretty much was just making fun of kids, he, he was, he did seem just like a funny guy that had a certain taste in, like, his humor. But then he started progressing more and more into what we know him as today. Mm-hmm. But then again, he also did grow in popularity with that. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It's complicated. I don't know. I, I guess if we're talking about content creators the influencers, I'm, I don't know what the right term for this is because I have never been a YouTuber Mm -hmm. and you know I have I have never been a technically we are content creators but I don't think we yeah we don't really call ourselves that we're yeah (laughs) sometimes there are people that get caught up or they get stuck in the content that they're creating but at the same time you it's not like He's still making these kids must be stop video today. Now he, I mean the other the other day I was browsing Twitch, and he was streaming and he was argu- arguing with a girl about hooking up. I don't even know what was happening there. Yeah, Price Gum is he's in that niche. Mm-hmm. He's that person on social media. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything you want to say to Rice Gum if he's listening to this? Um, you were cool for two seconds and you're not anymore. <laughs> That's it. That's always something you can put on a t-shirt. You were cool for two seconds. If anyone wants merch. <laughs> hey, we do not have merch right now anyway. So, <laughs> let us know. I mean, I'm joking, but also, hey. Hey. <laughs> We could make that. There are people in the commentary YouTubers when they make a joke and then they, they make a shirt out of it and they make a song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Back to what you were saying about, like, different stages of life. <laughs> Weird segue, <laughs> but it's funny to me because a lot of people in my life who, you know, were quote-unquote white men sidekicks mm-hmm. have, like... They were in a certain environment, mm-hmm. and specifically for like people in high school that I've met, mm-hmm. they haven't really um, been been friends with Asians, whether or not be the same type of Asian. They've just been surrounded by white people in their lives, mm-hmm. and after like becoming friends with more people of different like backgrounds, they realize like oh. Why was I doing that? Oh, why was I letting this happen to me, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that that seems to be a trend for Mm -hmm. most people in real life. Yeah. Because it's like, it's just sad, you know? Like, imagine not being able to have any friends unless you were (laughs) self-deprecating. Yeah. It's it's a a tough cycle and it happens every... I'm not sure what to call this phase of life but but maybe you could just call it puberty or something like middle school to high school (laughs) yeah I guess because even even if it's not about race there's a lot of people that just feel the need to make fun of themselves for validation Mm. which is why self-deprecation is a big trend during that stage of life Mm. although it also is a somewhat a trend on social media as well, being self-deprecating, saying, 
ha 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 I'm I'm so ugly or ha ha I'm so yeah. insert other negative thing to say. And actually one thing I wanted to say about social media since we were gonna get into that. The the thing with social media and white men's sidekick there is it's a really complicated battleground too dramatic. <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> because there's people that troll on purpose. Mm-hmm. And then there's people that, I don't know, sometimes they'll be on Instagram or something, and someone could comment the most normal thing, and then people, there are 500 replies because somehow an argument got started. Yeah. And it couldn't, and when I say normal thing, I don't mean, I don't consider what they said racist. I mean, they literally said something very normal. It could have it could have been a jewelry video, and someone said, "Oh wow, I thought it was interesting how this person did that," and then someone got mad at them. Yeah. And so, it's I don't know. It's really complicated. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on that? It it definitely gives like a a barrier. I think that a lot of people don't realize that you know even though it's social media, it's all online. It's mm-hmm. still. I hate being that person, but it really does follow you into, like, real life. hmm And I guess the more prominent places that these things are taking place, at least when we're talking about white men's sidekick, I'd say maybe Twitter is definitely one, and possibly, possibly TikTok. TikTok, okay. TikTok, there's also been, it was very quick in what I saw. There was a rise in pick me Asians. And then there was oh, a. Oh, we definitely need to talk about the pick me trend. Yeah. Um, okay, before I get into that, there was a rise in like pick me's. And then there was a rise in why are we letting pick me's like take over social media right now? So that was mm-hmm. quickly like just squashed down. But mm-hmm. again, but what? <laughs> you need to keep that in. <laughs> okay, okay, you know what? I'm, I'm keeping that in. By what I mean by pick me Asians is the type of Asian who will be like, oh, I'm, I'm Filipino, who wants me? Or like, it's like, it's basi- basically like a white man's sidekick, but. Hmm. You could technically say that pick me is the more current term for something like this. I guess, Although, yeah. Pick, pick me extend beyond beyond race. Yeah, it does. It's. I think the most popular term right now are pick me girls and pick me guys. Mm-hmm. But there are pick me Asians on TikTok, which literally, example, some guy posting a video, of just his face, him sitting on the floor and going, I'm Korean and nobody likes me. Hashtag Korean, hashtag for you page, hashtag follow, hashtag like, like that type of person. Is that a real video? Yes. You, you didn't just make that up in your head. No, 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 I'm thinking of someone in particular. Because you seriously didn't make that up in your head. I genuinely thought you were just saying that. No, 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 there, there is like, there were, I can think of a couple accounts just because someone made a video about it. Uh-huh. A couple accounts of Asian boys specifically saying, oh, like, do I look like your favorite K-pop idol? Or do I look like Jungkook or whatever? And basically being like, oh, I'm single, by the way. Stuff like that. <laughs> and all yeah. the comments are literally just K-pop fans being like, oh my god, yeah, you do. Date me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that also kind of plays into... This is an older episode, but the one we did with Joy, mm-hmm. when she was talk- talking about how she interviewed TikTokers and how they fall-, fall into the trap of basically all their fans are those types of people, mm-hmm. but then they also have so many fans. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. Like, I want to I wanna believe so badly that these kids are just, we got got and they're all satire, and they're just 
trolling us, but like you can be. you can see the difference between people making fun of it and people who genuinely just I guess are in a point in their lives where they want friends, they want a significant other that badly that they will do that on social media. Mm -hmm. And I mean, at the end of the day, if you are successful in that, it's th this is a I don't I don't want to call it a reality check. This is just an on an honest truth. You're you're really not gonna be happy that way. No. Even if you do succeed in this role or character, basically. Because at the end of the day, all of this does stem from an insecurity and a need for validation. And that's not to say that we're above all that. Everyone has yeah. things they don't feel very great about yeah. <laughs> for lack of a better term <laughs> you know we all we all have insecurities and we all have things we would would like to change mm -hmm. and it's, it's it's similar to what i was saying earlier about how you can't just say oh i wouldn't do i mean some things you can say you wouldn't do that i can confidently say not to bring up rice gum again but i can confidently say i wouldn't make that video that he made yeah, no no I would not, and we're, we're not bringing him up again. <laughs> yeah, no more rice cup. <laughs> but I wouldn't do that. But uh, like smaller things like that, especially off social media, or maybe just during a trend also, it's hard to say. Some people just want the likes and some people just want to be liked, you know? Like, I think there's definitely nothing wrong with even though people might might find it annoying, like, for example, um, like, gamer girls who go on Discord with a really high voice and then literally make money off of people by just doing that. Mm -hmm. Obviously, people call them pick-me girls and all that. But at the end of the day, there are people who are just doing it because they're making money off of it, which, honestly, you do you. But when <laughs> you are involving, a, like, a whole specific like type of person like for example race I think that it sets it like it sets it back like progress has been made but by doing that it's like I don't know you're just all this progress and you're just setting us back I really liked how we talked about both sides of this topic though because yes it is important to talk about why it's wrong and everything mm -hmm. that's wrong with being a white man sidekick, but it's also important to look at why this happens and how the quote unquote white man sidekick feels because yeah, we just need to reach that level of awareness. Yeah, I totally agree with what you said. And it is super important to be aware, both as the perpetrator and also as the player, because it's really easy, like we've been saying in the episode, to not realize that you are playing the white man psychic and it's not necessarily the right thing or the correct thing to always be shaming hey the white the you're the psychic you're so why are you doing this to our community because you you should also acknowledge the system that is backing that mm. and you don't have to be the psychic or necessarily the quote-unquote white man to be part of the problem Hmm. So at the end of the day, let's just all try, let's just all try to be aware, you know, listen to each other. I'm actually very glad that we had this conversation because I genuinely think it's an important thing to talk about. 100 percent agree, and we hope you enjoyed this episode as well. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and as always, feel free to leave a comment on your thoughts, your experiences and your general observation of you know any social media trends we mentioned today or just the idea of how people progress like the tangent that Rihanna said about people progressing from being a white man sidekick to interacting with more people of their background and then realizing wow that was kind of messed up 
I was in a, I was in a bad place. And we would love to hear any and all of that. If you guys like this episode and want to stay connected with us, check out our website in the description. It contains links to our streaming platforms such as Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, and more. Follow us for more behind-the-scenes content, announcements, and other random things we decide to put on there. See you next time. Bye. Bye.